This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is something we haven't seen in a while. This is the Gigabyte Aero 14 OLED for 2023. The 14-inch size of the Aero, well, we haven't seen that in quite a few years, and I'm glad we have because that is a underserved segment of the population here. You need something that is performant. You're thinking about a 14-inch MacBook Pro, but maybe you prefer Windows or you need Windows programs in particular, and there's not a super lot of choices. Now, we were reviewed the Alienware X14, which I enjoyed quite a lot, but obviously it has that distinctive Alienware gamey kind of look to it. Whereas this one is chill, you can take it anywhere. You know, you get the idea. We're gonna look at it now. So it's a laptop for creators. Yes, it's got game too, but it's an NVIDIA RTX 4050, 45 watt maximum GPU. So we're not talking about playing cyberpunk uh, with all the settings turned up high at 1080p even, you know, but it, it, could, it could do some gaming here. Obviously the size of the chassis, heat dissipation, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's not primarily a gaming computer, but it's fine if you want to play something like Apex Legends, a little Call of Duty once in a while, you get the idea of that sort of thing. But we're going to focus on it as a creator's laptop more so, because that's what Gigabyte intends for this. So the price for our model, which is the model you should get, is $1,700. And that gets you an Intel 13th generation Core i7, the 13700H. So there's your 45 watt CPU, that's just fine. The, the RTX 4050 GPU that I mentioned with switchable graphics. You have Intel Iris Xe to not totally tank that battery. I get a terabyte SSD and 16 gigs of low power DDR4. RAM. That RAM is soldered on board. For this class of machine, I am not super thrilled about that. I'd like it to be upgradable or at least to see a 32 gig option, but I think Gigabyte was trying to keep this one affordable and they figured there's the Aero 16 for you more power user types still. Now, there is a very odd model also listed, and that has a Core i5 Intel 12th gen. Now, considering that there was no last year's model of this, it's not like they just have leftovers or something, and it sells an RTX 4050 in it, so I don't know what the deal is, but for a $200 savings, it's not worth it to go back a generation and get the Core i5 besides instead of a Core i7, so if you're spending... 1700 go with the 1700 1500 bucks you're giving up too much in my opinion now one of the things that stands out is in the product name this is the gigabyte 14 oled after all is a 3k resolution oled display 16 by 10 aspect ratio and it's 90 hertz refresh on board so that's nice and it comes with x right color system calibration software with a bunch of pre-made profiles like srgb p3 um, completely unmanaged and <laughs> While well, Gigabyte says that the Delta E, or the difference from accurate perfect color, should be under one, for the unit we received now, granted this is early, so it's pre-release, it was not. I mean, the color accuracy bar graphs were smaller, l lower numbers are better, and smaller bars. Wow, off the charts, kind of. And that was using things like the P3 setting and the sRGB setting, so it's a bit out of control. I hope the shipping version isn't like that since this is aimed at creators and since they do make that claim about it being a color accurate display and yes i updated all the software and all that sort of thing and gigabytes control center looks more modern now it's still a little quirky a little flaky sometimes but anyway it's up to date so i don't know what the deal is there uh so the display the colors are a little amped up a little Disney. Now, if you're not using this for creator stuff, then you'll be like, wow, look at those colors, super duper vivid and all that stuff. And you might have fun with it. And if you're watching movies, everything will be mind blowingly colorful. You get the idea. But you can calibrate this. Just use a color limiter, which is a little hardware device. You buy them for around 100, 150 bucks. And if you're a pro, you probably have one already and you can tame it. Uh, the brightness does go down if you calibrate it correctly. I almost wonder about this maybe being an attempt to get it to be brighter. It's supposed to be HDR 600 with true black. And I, that should mean that it should reach 600 nits of brightness. And I tried turning off all the auto brightness controls I could find and it only managed about 400 nits, which is typical for an OLED display and it's fine, but yeah. This display is glossy, but it is not a touchscreen. But typically we see OLEDs with glossy displays. It's pretty reflective, I, I will say. You'll notice that, but it's not any worse than some of the competition out there with glossy displays. Obviously, gaming people probably would prefer matte displays, but oh well. Anyway, nice to look at. Hopefully it'll be fixed.
Keyboard on this, good for creators also. They say 1.7 millimeters of key travel. I'm not sure it feels quite that deep, but my God, is it tactile. Next to a low travel mechanical keyboard, this is about as clicky and positive a feedback as you could ever hope for. I really like typing on this, so well done. Also, you know, when you have silver keys and white backlighting, and by the way, these are laser edge keys, so the lettering will never wear off. Um, anyway, usually those are hard to see, middling kind of lighting, but this gets very bright, has multi-stage brightness levels for the keyboard backlighting in white. And when you set it to bright, you can see it no matter what. So well done there. The trackpad, as you might notice, has arrow, the letters arrow, well, I'm calling it tumbling around there on the trackpad. It's a glass trackpad. Supposedly has an anti-smudge surface. It, it has nice traction and feels good. Anyway, it, it's a nice trackpad. Another nod to creators is the UHS-2 micro SD card slot. So you got a fast camera, UHS-2 card in there. You'll enjoy faster speeds on this laptop. Ports are pretty good too, given the fact that it's very compact and it's pretty light too, by the way. It's about three and a quarter pounds or one and a half kilograms. But anyway, you've got HDMI 2.1, so you can drive three 4K displays if you want with this thing between the HDMI and the Thunderbolts. Two Thunderbolt 4s, a USB-C, which is one that you would use for the USB-C 130 watt charger that's included to free up the Thunderbolt 4 ports. You have one USB-A, that and the HDMI are on the back side. Maybe not the most convenient thing, but there isn't a lot of room here, is there? Of course, you have a headphone jack as well and that micro SD card slot. So connectivity is pretty good on this. We have two two watt stereo speakers. They're okay. I mean, it's not a very big laptop. They're about what you would expect. Not mind-blowingly great, but in terms of performance, again, Intel Core i7 is what we have here, 13th gen, which has been so far pretty good with the thermals and pretty good with the power consumption. That's what they really improved this year. And faster than 12th gen too, so there's that. And Intel did a pretty good job this time around. And then NVIDIA RTX 4050, again, is a 45 watt, so it's like max Q. Um, again, NVIDIA did pretty well with power consumption here. The 4050 is obviously on the lower end of GPUs, but it's certainly enough if you want to supercharge your Adobe Premiere performance, or if you're doing some Blender and that sort of thing, it's enough for most creators who are looking for an ultra portable on the go. And again, if you're gaming, certainly I wouldn't pick the most heavy AAA titles that are using a whole lot of ray tracing and stuff like that, but if you're playing older games or less demanding games, um, online multiplayer games, that sort of thing, you can actually do that. The cooling on this, the fans are not super huge, so that's one of the reasons why I'm saying I'm not leaning into this being a gaming laptop, and they're tuned to, to be quiet as well. It's not that this thing burns up, but but it, it doesn't have the cooling capacity to also use this for a six hour gaming session. You get the idea there. Noise is, again, well controlled because it is tuned to not be too noisy and the fans themselves have a good design so they don't make much noise. Surface temperatures, if you're using this for creativity kind of work and normal productivity work are absolutely fine, not burning hot. If you're gonna use it for gaming, you'll feel some heat above the keyboard area right under the display and on the underside, you know, but. 14 inch gaming laptop, don't ask too much. Happily, we have a Windows Hello IR camera here, which is something you can't take for granted with anything as a DGPU, because once you go into gamer territory, you don't get any kind of biometrics often enough. I like that. 1080p webcam, it's okay. Wi-Fi 6E is standard with Bluetooth 5.2. So the full complement of stuff. Now, battery life, 63 watt hour battery. And when we look at the internals, you'll see why. There just isn't room for anything bigger there, but that's not a lot for something that has a 3K OLED display, and OLED displays are power hogs unless you're displaying only black all the time. And yeah, so even Gigabyte only claims seven and a half hours of video playback time. Typically you see manufacturers make claims way above what they could possibly do. So if you've seen them only saying that, they're actually being pretty honest. That would be a best case scenario right there. You'd have to put it in lower power mode. And when it's unplugged, it does kind of basically throttle to try to save battery power. So plug it in or change your power plans, by the way, if you need more performance when it's unplugged. But this is sort of like a five to six hour laptop with moderate use. Obviously, if you're really hitting Premiere hard or Blender or something like that, then your run times will be even shorter. So that's an Achilles heel here. You get that 130 watt USB-C based charger. It's, uh, it's about the size you'd expect for a 130 watt brick, but it's kind of neat. Like Dell, they found a way to go over 100 watts, which is the usual limit for USB-C charging. So it gives it a bit of universality. Yes, you could use a lower wattage charger if you had one available. Just don't expect it to charge very quickly, or if it's demanding work you're doing, it still might drain some.
but at least you have that option, don't you? That USB-C port obviously can also charge USB devices like your phone if you need. To get inside, pleasantly, there's no harsh plastic clips, so you don't have to pry a whole lot. You do have to undo the Torx screws. Uh, these are visible, these are visible. These have little black paper or something over them, so just poke your Torx screwdriver in there and you can unscrew those too, and then just take it off. Metal cover. And here are the internals. Now for a powerhouse, it's a little bit odd because RAM is soldered on here. So you get 16 gigs of low power DDR5 RAM and you cannot upgrade that later. It's almost a shame for something this powerful. I'd like to see a 32 gig option, but I have a feeling that Gigabyte was going for affordability here. And we have the usual two fans, CPU and GPU over here. One M.2 SSD slot, PCIe 4, you get a one terabyte drive with this machine. Socketed Wi-Fi 6E card with Bluetooth 5.2. The usual speakers that flank the battery, and it's a 63 watt hour battery, which ain't a lot of battery for something that's fairly powerful with a 3K OLED display on board, but then again, size, weight, all that sort of thing, I suppose, was a consideration. Obviously, the motherboard takes up a good deal of space. It's not like there was a whole lot of extra room for a bigger battery in here. So that's the Gigabyte Aero 14 OLED for 2023, and it's nice aluminum chassis. It's chill looks. Might not be the most imaginative design, but it's clean looking. It's fine. And I'm glad that they made it because there aren't enough performance-oriented 14-inch laptops out there for creators, for people who want to occasionally game on the go and not break their backs carrying around a big machine. As ever with Gigabyte products, the hardware is pretty darn good. I'm, I hope they fix that OLED display calibration thing, but uh, the software is always just a little bit weird, their Gigabyte Control Center and all that sort of thing, but hopefully that will get even more solid as time goes on. We didn't have too many problems like we used to have several years ago with their software, at least. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. Thumbs up if you like this vid.